Hi, I'm Anna Mills. I'm an English instructor at College of Marin in the San Francisco Bay Area, and I'd like to share with you a really short presentation on using ChatGPT strategies for faculty, staff, and administrators. Um, I've prepared this for the AI in Education Unleashing Creativity and Collaboration webinar at the University of Kent. So I'm going to just go over some sort of ground rules for using ChatGPT, some uses, and some techniques for getting the most out of it. These slides are available for commenting and sharing. They are licensed um, for adaptation at this bit.ly slash using GPT, and I'll put that in the recording notes as well. So how useful is AI in the workplace in particular? Here are some quotes from a New York Times article in which um, people have said that it's like collaborating with an alien, that everything is becoming much easier, that it feels like I've hired an intern. What used to take me around half an hour to write now takes one minute and it's enormous fun. Okay, so that sounds pretty alluring, but is that hype? Is that overstated? Um, I'm going to suggest that it's worth trying and seeing, but before we use it, I do suggest some caveats and some ground rules. Um, and these are disclosure, privacy considerations, verifying the outputs, and critiquing the outputs. Outputs meaning the text that ChatGPT produces. So by disclosure, I mean that if we would credit a human for similar assistance, say for coming up with a full sentence or a paragraph, um, stringing those words together in that order, um, we should credit ChatGPT or any other language model. Um, and note that there are human authors behind that text um, that the system has learned from, or quote unquote learned from, recognized patterns statistically from the text of human authors. So it's not a secret that something is AI text or it shouldn't be. Um, and even though AI text detection software is not foolproof by a long shot and not likely to become foolproof, um, it is true that it is evolving. There are new approaches. And even if something is not recognizable as AI text right now, it could be in future. Um, so I would just say that we and students alike should consider that, you know, it's, it's important ethically to disclose what's AI and what's not. And it's also important um, for accountability because it might be detectable. And this is a link to my other presentation on transparency around AI text. So by privacy, I just mean that if you look at the OpenAI privacy policy, you'll see they have pretty free reign to use personal information um, to develop new programs and services, as well as communicating with us, improving their services, um, analyzing their services. That's a pretty broad umbrella. So we really should not share sensitive information or private information with ChatGPT, not our own information, and certainly not student writing or data. Um, We should also verify, we should check whatever ChatGPT tells us. Um, and this is coming in from a message from OpenAI to educators that um, it's important to verify the outputs and that that often involves a high degree of expertise. So if we are asking it something and we don't have a way to check its answer, that's problematic. Um, we need to build in time to check and evaluate what it's giving us. Sometimes it will be wrong. Sometimes it will be biased. And always it will be lacking in real understanding or intention. Um, it is a statistical model. It replicates patterns in language. And even though it might seem like there's comprehension, especially since it's based on so much data and compute power, it starts to look like comprehension, but it's, it's not. Um, and it does have biases based on the data it was trained on, which is, you know, the Internet is predominantly more disproportionately written by um, people from developed nations, by white people, by men. Um, so biases are baked in and they are not possible to entirely remove, though the companies are trying. 
Um, and language models also, like ChatGPT, are designed to produce plausible outputs, not true ones. They're not built to search for truth. They're built to replicate patterns and to predict what the humans would likely say next. So hold on, that was just a few caveats. Should we even be using this tool if it does have those biases baked in? And there are even more considerations that we could, that we could look at. Um, like copyright, um, the rights around the data that the models were trained on, the rights around the outputs that it produces, um, AI colonialism, how it, re how it relates to the data of people in the developing world and the labor of people in the developing world and the labor of people here who have contributed to the models and are not compensated or recognized. Um, the environmental impacts as well. So these are all linked. There's a wonderful piece by Leon Furs on teaching AI ethics. And I really encourage, you know, hope all of us can continue to explore and learn about this and discuss it with students and participate in the societal conversations about regulation and the direction we want to take this. Um, that said, I do um, continue to wrestle with those questions and I am using the system in limited ways. I'm fascinated by it. I do find it useful and I want to understand what it is my students have access to and how the writing environment is changing as professionals are using these models more commonly. And I also want to understand how they might best be used. So um, using ChatGPT could be to substitute for thinking. It could be to phone it in, but we could also use it to help us think and to push our thinking. Um, and that's an approach I saw articulated by Kyle Booten, an English professor at the University of Connecticut. Um, we can think about that in terms of asking it for feedback rather than for revision or writing. Um, we can ask it how to improve a grant proposal, um, ask it what could be clearer in our writing. Give it the criteria for a funding decision and then ask it, how does our proposal do on those criteria? Um, ask it for counter arguments, skeptical reactions to something that we've come up with. We can prompt it to uh, draw out our ideas um, and reflect back what we're saying to help us um, take the next steps in our own thinking. So um, ask it to ask us questions. We can ask it to pull out ideas from a brainstorm. Act ask it to act as an interviewer. It also can be useful for sort of formal purposes. Um, it's good at finding patterns. So we can ask it to say, convert one format of citation into another format or to clean up a transcription of a talk or to check that our format fits a particular template. Um, of course, we have to check it. It's not always going to be accurate. Um, here it was useful to me. I wanted to know what the particular Google Sheets formula was for um, counting something, and it did come up with the correct answer. Um, that's a really easy thing for me to check because I could see if that function was in fact what I wanted once it told me about it. Um, we could extend this idea of format into a broader sense. So say we have some raw ideas related to a course outline, lesson plan, a rubric. Um, we could give it those raw ideas and ask it to put them into the um, traditional format um, that we want or to translate from one format to another. So say given a rubric, what would the corresponding assignment look like? Or given an assignment, what might the rubric look like? Um, here I asked it to um, help me identify differences between the state course outline and the local course outline. And it did reasonably well at pointing out some, some key differences between my school's approaches and the state's. Um, you can go to the transcripts of those sessions through the links if you want to sort of see more about how I worked with it. Um, you can ask it for editing and style feedback. And again, you don't have to give it control. Don't let it take control. You can ask it for suggestions, or you can even just ask it to uh, describe what you've done and point out any errors or um, anything that, for example, might come across as unfriendly in an email. 
Um, and you can give it an example of the tone and style you're aiming for and sort of ask how your work matches up to that. I really love these ideas from Dr. Philippa Hardman for learning designers. Um, we could try out our, our feedback, um, give it to ChatGPT before giving it to a student and ask ChatGPT, does this come across as positive and motivating? Um, how could I tweak it to be more so? Um, or we could give it our draft learning objectives and ask it to um, sort of optimize them using Bloom's taxonomy and include so I can statements. Um, whatever we see as a best practice that we're aiming for, we can ask it, how does this measure up to that? And how might I tweak it to sort of, um, to better meet that, that best practice? These are some apps for research you might wanna try out. Um, Elicit.org has a database of scholarly articles and you can, it'll give you summaries of them. Bing Chat does something pretty similar with web sources. Perplexity AI is similar. Explain Paper will summarize and, and help you understand or attempt to help you understand academic papers. The cautions are that sometimes the summaries of, of sources are actually not accurate, um, or sometimes the system quote unquote misunderstands the question. In this example from this screenshot, Bing answered a different question than the one I asked. Um, and its sources were not useful to what I was actually looking for. So a few techniques for getting the most out of it. Um, you might see these called prompt engineering. Um, and I would argue that it really doesn't have to be that technical. It doesn't have to be seen as technical. You don't need any arcane knowledge um, to you know, try out different techniques. Um, and these are the same techniques we might use in conversation or in our roles as educators, uh, colleagues, managers, we think about how to draw out our interlocutor. We can be daring, playful, experimental as we do this, and those are essentially the things that, that help to get the most out of this system because we're using natural language to interact with it. So a few simple techniques that might not be obvious, they weren't really obvious to me. Um, First, another caveat, it's not always useful for everything, so feel free to ditch it at any time if you're trying it for a task. Um, but if it's not seeming useful, it might be worth trying again or asking it for multiple answers. Tell it what it got wrong. Tell it what we didn't like about what it gave us and ask it to redo. It's perfectly willing to do that. Um, give it anything we have to go on, so if it's, need some text from a current news article, just feed it the text. Um, give it starter ideas. Um, another technique that you might see called chain of thought prompting is taking it step by step through a process, just telling it to do the first step and then the next step. We can even ask it to describe its reasoning and that's been shown to sometimes lead to better outputs. I like to think of it as that we're, we're directing it um, it's the actor, so we can tell it to change its style, make that more friendly, to play a particular role as a coach, a mentor teacher, an editor. Um, we can even tell it to be unbiased, and that doesn't completely work, but it has been shown to help. Um, and the last thing we can do is sort of meta. We can actually ask it to check its own work ask it if it, there are any flaws in say the code it just gave us, or um, we can ask it, how can you help me to write X? What information do you need? Um, of course, it isn't really an entity that knows its own capacities, but still the output might give us some ideas. And you can find a lot more on getting the most out of ChatGPT, often this is called prompt engineering, and there are a lot of great free resources and courses, um, even a quick reference sheet with just sample single sentence prompts to give you ideas on how you might use it. Um, so I just would say, don't be intimidated. Let's be daring and playful and try it out. And I hope that you um, have fun and find it useful. All right. Thank you.